Hello, House of Mouse Reviews here for today's review. And let me start off by saying this the very beginning. I don't have really any um, experience watching Digimon. In fact, I, I very much a newbie. I have never... I Not to say I'm not aware of it. I have always... But the thing is, I haven't, I haven't watched any of the anime. I haven't played any of the games. I may have played it once or twice with some toys. And I do, do, did own some Digimon trading cards. They were just secondhand given to me. I, I don't even know why my parents got them for me personally. I, I'm really not sure. But I know I had them. Had them. Had is the key word. But, so why would you think I am what I've decided to go and watch the Digimon movie and review it. Well, I figured I might as well give it a shot. I mean, to be fair, a lot of people who haven't seen the the, the, the show have actually watched the movie. I mean, because it claims to be you'd be able to jump in very uh, and without any knowledge of Digimon and get the gist of it. Well, guess what? It doesn't actually help you in that regard. Oh, it doesn't. Like, like seriously. <laughs> It the fact because they don't explain what Digimon is, nor do they explain it really that much of the main characters. In fact, to be fair, there is one key major thing to keep in mind of this. This is actually a feature length film. It's actually three short films piled into one to form an overarching plot. Basically, you can call this a package film, which animated package films have happened in the past. The Looney Tunes did that a lot during their movie, their compilation films in the late 70s and the 80s. Disney, during the war, World War II, released six package films, you know, to you know, make, it up, make a little bit of money during, while they were using, making animated war, wartime propaganda. And, of course, then you had the Fantasia films and the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Um, and they, it is possible to make a good package film and make it work, and even have a bit of a, a flowing feature-length structure. But this doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, jeez. Well. Why not waste any more time? Yeah. Um... Let's just get started into talking about Digimon. Except I would if the film didn't start with this. This is it, Digipal. In a few seconds, the doors will open for the best movie of all time. The Digimon movie. Oh. Okay. I'm sure most of you are aware of this. But the movie doesn't actually start off with Digimon. Instead, we get a three to five minute short television episode of Fox Kids' other major program at that time, Angela Anaconda. It, I mean, to be fair, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, let's be honest. Even without this, it. I think they realized they even without. Including this, they weren't getting, you know, going to reach the feature length structure and throw this in as an extra bonus. But nothing, it adds nothing to it. All it is is Angela and her friends going to watch the Digimon movie. What? She gets uh, annoyed by her by her rival and her teacher. She imagines herself as as a Digimon as a hero character from Digimon and going to a Digi battle. Then she and her friends find out they're in the wrong cinema and bolt out to the right. To the right one, only to leave in the the teacher and the rival in in their wake. Ugh, okay. So, yeah, so nothing really. You know, it's nothing to it. And all it is is basically a propaganda. It just it's basically you know them saying they've made the greatest movie in in, his, in history, but it really isn't. <laughs> and I guess there are two things you keep. Two things I want to also say. It's not the first time this is. It's not the only time this has ever happened because I'm sure fans will probably 
people will let me know about the whole All Us Frozen Adventure being included in as part of the theatrical release of Coco, which honestly can be considered worships because that's a 30 match TV special that got aired before Coco. And it has really nothing to do with it, so that's one thing to keep in mind. But there are two things I want to keep... There is two things I want to add, but I do want to say this. Well, Olaf was included in the theatrical release. Disney learned their lesson and did not include it in in the tip when they released it to the physical media and, and digital on Disney+. Plus. So there's that. The other, th so, and the thing is, it's not actually technically part of the film. It was just a bad decision, yada, 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 and they, they, they really shouldn't have done it. This is part of the film. It starts at every, on every VHS tape, every DVD, probably should get, get shown also during TV, when it's aired on TV. Not sure if it's ever released on Blu-ray, though. This is part of the film. I can imagine people would be very angry when they... When it's you see that Digimon poster and then screens out to show Edge Lack Fonda. And let's get on with the next part. I hate Edge Conda. I really do. I've been told I used to apparently watch. I used to watch it when it was on aired on ABC for kids back yeah, in the early two thousands, and it just flew over my head. And. I completely forgot about it until I watched the Nostalgia Creeks review of this 12 years ago. And the floodgates just erupted. They most certainly did. Oh, and I realized just what I had been forgetting. And even now. Oh, it's so... It's so... The show is so annoying. I mean, it's not just the fact you've got the humanoid black and white faces and, you know, limbs and, and hands and feet and all that that get, you know, that makes it already creepy, uh, you know, creepy as and disturbing. But also the fact that Angel is an absolutely horrible character. She's annoying. She's a, she's so much of a bad protagonist to watch. And it's just, her voice actor, acting, her voice is annoying. And not to be too mean to the actress who played her, but it's still just absolutely, uh, infuriating. I I really didn't want to talk about this, but I ha I just figured I had to because this is actually part of because it's part of the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't even started with the actual review. When jeez, uh, I'm more again annoyed. I mean, Angela is much worse. Is most annoying. Angela Ancon is the most annoying show I've ever been around. In fact, you know, I think she's it's a worse show. It should be much considered worse. And Caillou, you know, actually, I don't, I'm going to be honest. I actually don't like Caillou. I think that's better. That's a better Canadian kid show that came came out from there instead of this. In fact, you know what? I'm going to prove it. I'm going to play the Caillou theme song over some snippets of this short, and I can actually tell I'm actually okay. I'm just a kid who's bored. Each day I grow some more. I like exploring. I'm Caillou. See, see, I'm, I'm, I've calmed down. So, you know what, let's just get started and talk about the actual film. And, yeah. So, the short... the As I said before, these are three short films stuck together to make a theatrical film. And let's just start by saying... And these shorts, um... There is no real attempt to make it into a feature-length film. And... After starting off with the infamous Digi Rap, which I'll probably will mention a little bit later, we get the first short, which shows how our two, how two of the main protagonists from the show, Ty and his uh, sister Kari, um, encounter their first Digimon when they were just babies. Well, Ty being a toddler, Kari is able to, to speak you know, normal to is somehow able to speak, and even though she's about to think one, apparently from the short. And the event, the Digimon eventually grows up rapidly and starts going on a rampage, and, and the two have to calm, tiny sister have to calm it down. Flash forward to uh, I think eight or four years later from the timestamp. I'm not. I have to double check, but we see the ma during the main the first se series of of Digimon where Ty and his group of friends 
including his sister and a few others, uh, part of the team known as the Digi Destin Troop, who use their Digimon to protect um, the reality from the from the threats of the Digiverse, or, as far as I'm concerned, with their Digimon as their, their fighters. Name. And apparently there's an affected, corrupted Digimon that's born from a computer virus that hacks into into the all computers set and eventually hacks into the US Pentagon and launches a missile that's going to strike him um, somewhere in America. And I forget. Honestly, I get severe um, uh, Summer Wars and Terminator vibes when I'm, when I'm thinking about it. Mm. I'm pretty sure maybe this is where Summer Wars actually got the idea of the computer system and all that and you know, watch that movie again. And yeah, um, so yeah, that, that's one, f that's the first part, and that's the second part, which then we get to the third short where it's set during the second version of the second series of Digimon, Bakari is now the leader, one of the leaders of the Digidestin, while her brother is now retired and along with his friends, and we get a new group of protagonists, and, oh, and eventually their group meets this new kid named Willis, who apparently um, has this, who, whose Digimon was once corru was corrupted by the infected Digimon from the previous short, and is now, and is out to, you know, get revenge apparently on him for apparently letting him get um, this unstable, being unstable, and also taking his other main Digimon, which is, I think his brother, or the Digimon's brother, or sister, uh, I'm not too sure, but I know they're technically twins. And they have to stop uh, this Digimon before it, uh, well, uh, gets revenge, basically. And Willis has to open up to the others. So yeah, that's the... Those are basically the shorts, and... Um, I'm sure they would work well as just short films on their own, but combining them to make a feature-like structure, well, you can mind the attempt, it just doesn't work. And yeah, it it really it really feels that way. Um, and it's easy to say that the makers that you know Fox did not understand what makes a package film work. And as I said, they don't always have have to have a connecting factor to make a feature like structure. But there would be some ways of doing it that could work, like the narrator for the Winnie, for the main adventures of Winnie Poodle, how in the first Looney Tunes movie, Bugs Bunny introduced the shorts by talking about pains of his friends and their adventures. That that works out better. But with this, it's not really so much. The defining factor that connects it, not just work at the two, sh the, the second and third short is connected by the by the by the computer virus and how it affected Willis. Even though he is sort of the defining factor in these shorts, I don't get it. Um, but Kari is the narrator, can basically, you know, explains what's going on and how this connects to what, and... Well, okay, the, the, the second and third short connect, is able to connect, but not really the first. Um... And, I mean, I've already explained that this... It just... How it just doesn't, um, explain really anything to a newcomer, and... I... I'm not trying to be over... I'm not trying to repeat that horse, but you know, you could explain a bit more just what a Digimon does, how they fight, how they evolve into multiple creatures, even though I do have some little understanding about it, but you need to give us more for people who haven't even touched, who haven't even, you know, given a shot at these things. Um, I also gotta give a bit of a criticism to the, vo to the voice acting, and I really... Uh, don't want to be too harsh because it's clear that they brought back all all the all the original, all the English vo voices from the sh from the two series and and you know they obviously you know have, know how to you know voice these characters and do them do them well. You know I will admit uh, hearing the voices of Ty and Kari when they were babies in the first short combined to how they sound exactly the same as. In the, the other two, I'm a little bit like, uh, not really sure about that. And it's clear to say they've got some pretty good talent in it. I mean, there's a bunch of names in there that I that I am familiar with, and including, and some of them I'm even big fans of from their from their later work, like Kirk Fortin and Colleen O'Shaughnessy. 
But I think the biggest issue is that, I mean, anime is often, English West, uh, localization of animes would often, the characters would often, the voices would, would sometimes not match the lip, the lip, the lip syncing and all that. And the, the delivery seems very rushed. I mean, this wasn't just limited to just uh, uh, TV shows, but also anime cutscenes used for video games as well. But yeah, you can definitely tell it's rushed, and I'm just and the temp and the speed of it of the delivery. I'm like, yeah, I just I get really distracted by it, unfortunately. And it's not too much of a big issue, but it is that it is that thing. It is it is something to be said. And I think the other thing is with the first short in particular, which is my the one I think is the worst, is uh, they do a fair bit of toilet humor in that first short. There's a, quite a lot of fart jokes in, in it. So I think I can't, okay, for a short film, basically, I think it's about five or something, but it sticks out. I get really annoyed when, when, ch when family, an when anime family films have to result to, you know, Call it humor just to, you know, get a cheap laugh and everything. And especially in stuff where it doesn't belong, and it doesn't belong here. I mean, granted, this wasn't, this was a re released a year before Shrek uh, defined everything. And, and the only real thing that sort of came before it was The Lion King with Pumba. But, yeah, when I see stuff like this... It can't get any worse. <laughs> It just got worse. I groaned so much, unfortunately. Yeah. It, it it gets really, really distracting, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm I'm sure it's not the biggest issue, but it is an issue a big issue to me, unfortunately. But with that said, I do have some things I can say that I legit enjoy. Um and I think the first thing is easy to say is that I mean the animation is actually pretty decent. I mean, I mean it's it's not the best, and I do think the Pokemon anime movies had you know better produ uh, production. You can tell these is definitely made for short films, but I, I don't know. I like it enough. I, it works out fine. Um, though I will admit, I'm not the eyes uh, sometimes look yeah, a little strange to me. I just have this preference when it comes to. Japanese anime with the look of their eyes. I don't know. I just it just doesn't it just looks a little too different for me. Um, another thing I gotta give credit for in particular is the fact, and this is a credit more to the show more than it is to this, but they actually age the characters. I mean, these it's a different group of hero of children heroes throughout each series when they when they entered it. And I I love that. I I mentioned it before. Um, when I reviewed the Flintstones Holly Rock Like Baby, how much I appreciated that they aged the characters throughout, throughout it to eventually gain to those movies where Pebbles and Bam Bam were adults getting married and having kids themselves and friend Will also adopting a young, a young boy as well. Um, but of course they were eventually revert back to the original continuity. And, and, other, and I also liked, um, and I liked it when other shows did that. I mean, I, I liked it in Ben 10 how they did it as well with each series, and I think Digimon basically uh, maybe inspired Ben 10 to do that. Um, I can also appreciate, and I guess one thing I will also give credit to, even though I guess this is also more nitpick, is the soundtrack. Um, yeah, it, it's strange, but this soundtrack is really good. Um, and it just feels weird that it's being attached to this, to be fair. It's just, it, it's unfortunate. I know a lot of people are going to say, be a little bit um, surprised when I say this, is that I actually don't mind the digi rap. I mean, yeah, it's, it's cheesy, it's bad, and probably I think it's worse than the DK rap from Donkey from 64. But I actually think it's actually pretty good. I don't mind it, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cheesy, it's horny, it's bad. <laughs> it's, uh, annoying, and it can be annoying, but I don't mind it. It's, just the way I feel. Plus, I think coming after Angela, it's not the Angela on the second so I was, could appreciate this more. Um, another thing is worth mentioning is that I I have been is that the cover of uh, King Wild's Kids in America uh, in this um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I gotta give uh, credit to, to the band Len, and they did a decent job, but, you know, but I wouldn't really call it perfect. I, I don't know, I just, if they're getting a lot of the other songs they got in this, well, why didn't they get the rights to the Kim Wilde version? You know, just, just saying, maybe, maybe it's just a deal Fox had, I don't know. And then the other thing worth mentioning with the soundtrack is at the closing of this is that we, for the first, it was the, that the film also is the first time that All Star by Smash Mouth was ever featured in a film. Yeah, surprising. I mean, it's featured at the very end of it and it's a blink and miss at moment. In fact, honestly, I don't really think, um, it, you know, it really works and, yeah. But the fact is, this is actually, the, you got to keep in mind, this, you got to appreciate and give credit to it, it was the first film to do this. I mean, this be... In fact, the next two films were released a year after they were featured the song. One being Rat Race, where Smash Mouth themselves actually played it. Um, were actually playing themselves in, in the film. And, yeah, that was, that was fine. Uh, funny, no, the, that was probably the worst part of that film. I don't know if you it. And, of course, we can't go past without mentioning Shrek, which is definitely the definitive version of... definitive, uh film of how to use. I mean, using it at the start work is, honestly, yeah, you can't go past it. But, yeah. Um, you gotta give credit to what credit is due for being the first in all that. There's that. Um, but really, that's about it. And, I, maybe I shouldn't be too harsh on this. I mean, because I never watched the shows, and I don't have really that much experience with the, with the IP, but, you gotta judge it on its own if it's being called a movie, and when it says specific things that you should be that it says it's gonna do and it doesn't, and can't, and instead includes stuff that they sh that is absolutely horrible and doesn't belong, like, uh, like as I said, the opening, you really notice it, and it's un and you know you gotta you gotta call it call it out for it. This is a two. This is easily a 2.5 out of 10 half stars. It's easy, and it's easy to see why the failure of both this and Don Bluth's Titan AE, which were released the same year, why Fox, 20th Century Fox, stopped get, even considering doing uh, hand-drawn anime movies, with, well, with the exception of the Simpsons movie, a few seven years later, and just folk then went to Blue Sky to make CG films after they had their success with Ice Age. So yeah, it, it's easy to it's easy to pick apart pick apart this. But and I'm sh and I know Digimon f uh, fans don't like it either. So easy to just, it's easy to say say um you hate it and you're not gonna get um a, you know a, basically demonetized by fans saying that you, you can't you shouldn't hate it when you haven't seen the show. Yeah, well, I guess it's it's easy to say that. So what's next? Well, obviously I'm not too sure. You're just going to have to wait and see. Who knows, maybe there's some special projects, and special videos I'm coming up with. But you'll have to wait and see if I get the time to complete them. But in the meantime, Asif Mercer is out. I shall see you next time. Ciao.